My hypothesis regarding the cause of COPD was developed after observing a COPD patient at the end of 40 years of smoking. I watched as she deteriorated down to end-stage emphysema or stage 4 COPD. The following was observed. Number one, she no longer smoked cigarettes. Number two, her COPD progressed without any smoking or secondhand smoke present. Number three, doctors stated that they did not know what caused the progression of COPD. They stated that it was a mystery. Number four, doctors continued prescribing drugs which would temporarily mask the symptoms of COPD but would not stop the disease progression. And number five, as the patient deteriorated down to stage four COPD, the doctors scheduled her appointments further apart, not closer together as you would think. And number six, I realized for them, she was dying right on schedule. I soon realized that since she was no longer smoking, and since smoking was the cause of COPD, the disease should have stopped progressing, but it did not. I realized logically that there was something moving the COPD forward, and it was obviously not smoking. Smoking had been removed from the equation and was no longer a factor in the outcome. There had to be something else causing the COPD progression, and it did not seem like anyone was even looking for it. Researchers continued developing new drugs that would temporarily mask the symptoms of COPD, but did not develop even one that would stop the progression of the disease. I was told by many people that there's no money in curing disease, but there is lots of money in managing disease. I also realized that allopathic medicine developed by Hippocrates treats only symptoms. The obvious problem with that is disease has a cause and an effect. The symptoms are the effect. Treating only the effect instead of the cause of the disease is the primary reason that the doctors do not have any drugs that actually cure anything yet they have more than 40,000 drugs they can prescribe. There are a few exceptions emerging. One drug that is relatively new supposedly cures hepatitis C. I'm not aware of even one more drug that cures a disease. I began looking for what was causing COPD progression in the absence of smoking. I remembered hearing that Leonard Nimoy had died little more than a year earlier from COPD and had quit smoking more than 30 years ago. I realized there must be some sort of pathogen making its way into the lungs and even after the lungs had healed from smoking, this pathogen remained and continued proliferating. My next bit of research was finding any and all pathogens associated with growing or curing tobacco or both. I found that a fungi known as brown spot or Alternaria alternata grew on tobacco. I then found that blue mold or Peronospora tabacina also grew on tobacco. I found pictures of blue mold present on tobacco that was growing in the fields and I also found pictures of blue mold present on tobacco leaves that were curing. All cured tobacco is used for consumption. Blue mold is also considered a fungus. I also found that Circospora nicotiana, or frog eye leaf spot, was found growing on tobacco leaves. Frog eye leaf spot is also a fungi. Next I found Phytophthora parasitica or black shank which grows on tobacco leaves. Black shank is an oomycete. The oomycetes, also known as water molds, are a group of several hundred organisms that include some of the most devastating plant pathogens. Oomycetes form a distinct phylogenetic lineage of fungus-like eukaryotic microorganisms. Sclerotinia sclerotiorum, or collar root, is another oomycete found growing on tobacco. An article in Tobacco Control 
2008 Volume 17 highlights another potential health risk associated with tobacco in a cigarette or in the smokeless form. Several studies were highlighted. One study showed the presence of bacteria, bacterial toxins, fungal spores, and fungal toxins in cigarette tobacco. A second study showed the presence of 23 different species of bacteria in cigarette tobacco. An additional study revealed that in 14 brands of cigarettes, the fungal spores were identified and that Aspergillus fumigatus was the most prevalent one. Invasive Aspergillus is a significant cause of morbidity and mortality in immunocompromised patients. Several questions were raised by the tobacco control study. Would the bacterial growth occur on tobacco dust and microparticulates that could reach the lung? The answer was that 90% of tobacco particulates grew bacteria and when filters were looked at, the tobacco flakes in the filters all grew bacteria. That was 11 different brands they used. My hypothesis is that smokers inhale smoke into their lungs from tobacco with fungal spores present. So the smoker is damaging their lungs by smoking, but also planting a garden of fungi in their lungs. After the patient quits smoking, the body begins replacing all the cells in the lungs, a process that takes about two years. The problem is that these rejuvenated lungs still have a garden of fungi growing and proliferating in them. From evidence I have compiled over the last 15 years, I realize this fungi is most likely an opportunistic fungi. Opportunistic fungi emulate human cells and go undetected by the immune system, especially an immune system compromised by antibiotics and poor diet. These opportunistic fungi adapt very quickly to any and all treatments used to eradicate them. They also proliferate very slowly and take many years and usually decades to proliferate enough to cause noticeable problems for the patient. As the fungus proliferates, it takes up more and more of the lung volume. As this occurs, the body attempts to adapt by distending the lungs in an attempt at increasing the breathing area of the lungs. This adaptation eventually results in a condition well known to physicians as barrel chest. My protocols for alternatively treating COPD are a process that eradicates this fungi and any other pathogen that may have invaded the lungs or the body. These protocols also move the body to a state of optimal health thus allowing the body's own defenses to assist in this eradication process. The proof is in the pudding. To date, we have helped people utilize these protocols in 46 different countries and essentially proven that the protocols work through empirical evidence. We are currently organizing a proof of concept trial. This is the precursor to a double-blind clinical trial that will prove these protocols will, in fact, reverse COPD. If you would like more information regarding my approach to treating COPD, please visit my website at www.emphysema-treatments.com. Please help us spread the word and like this video. And of course, please make sure and subscribe to our channel. Click the notifications bell so you are notified when we upload the next video. Thank you. This presentation contains images that were used under a Creative Commons license. Click here to see the full list of images and attributions.